So, for the 20th episode of this little YouTube thing that I do, I, besides the new theme music, I decided to think back, what was I doing 20 years ago today? Oh, that's right. I was playing Super Mario World on my brand new Super Nintendo Entertainment System that I just got for Christmas. Now you're playing with power. Super power. So let's take a look at this thing. I've been putting off reviewing the Super Nintendo Entertainment System for many months now because I wanted to give this classic game console its proper justice. But then when I realized that I can't, I figured, well, I'll just sit here and talk about it. Many people regard the Super Nintendo Entertainment System to be the greatest gaming console of all time, and I can't really argue with them except to say that the Sega Genesis is better. I've never been a big fan of the exterior look of this thing. I think the buttons are kind of cheap and, and clunky feeling. It's kind of like a, uh, a kid's toy almost. I definitely think that Japan and Europe got the much sexier version of the console. However, the Super NES set many standards in the gaming industry. Every console came equipped with a composite stereo AV cable, something that Genesis and other consoles did not, and the system was capable of outputting 256 colors on screen at once. It made it almost comparable to personal computers at the time, which made games like Killer Instinct look and sound awesome. The controller of the Super NES also set new standards in the industry with four face buttons and two shoulder triggers, which is a standard still used in today's game consoles, like the Xbox 360. Games on the Super NES tended to have smooth, colorful graphics, and the Sony SPC700 sound hardware was capable of nine digitally sampled audio channels. It's the first console to have completely digitized sounds and music, as earlier systems used tone generators for audio. However, there is a weak spot in the Super NES hardware, and that is the central processor. It runs at a relatively slow 3.5 MHz, half the speed of the Sega Genesis and TurboGrafx-16. And in action games like Super R-Type here, the game slows almost to a crawl, and there's a lot of things going on something you don't see in Genesis or TurboGrafx shooters. The Super Nintendo Entertainment System and its main competitor, the Sega Genesis, engaged in a war that is still being fought to this day with millions of avid fans arguing on internet forums about which game console is better. You guys know I prefer the Sega Genesis to the Super NES, but there's no reason why you can't have both. In fact, there is so much awesome right here that it doesn't even fit into the camera frame. The 16-bit gaming generation is my favorite generation of all time, so naturally everybody should have both of these game consoles. In fact, you should also have one of these as well, because then you have all three 16-bit game consoles, and how else can you play awesome games like Blazing Lasers, or Golden Axe, or Killer Instinct? See, there's no other way to play all three of these awesome games in the same day. You gotta have all three. You also need one of these to play the awesome God of War. There, I'll just, uh, just stick that in there. You could probably also use one of these to play. If I can get the cartridge right. Centipede. And I suppose you really uh, I do it you can't live without one of these to play Gears of War. Just uh, there we go. 
There. And we should probably have one of these too. 